Hello and boom shakalaka. This is Rob Hamilton with Soul Canyon Training and Development, and I am ready to take you through Excel Level 4, Pivot Tables and Macros. We're going to start with Pivot Tables, and then uh, once we're done with that, we'll go into Macros. Pivot Tables are very, very interesting. I'm sure you probably know what Pivot Tables are if you're taking this segment, but just in case you don't, um, there's a lot of things you can do with Pivot Tables that you could otherwise do with basic database features in Excel like sorting and filtering and subtotals, all things that I've taught in previous Excel levels. But pivot tables really, I consider to be the crown jewel of Excel's data analysis toolkit. You can do things with pivot tables that you can't do uh, with those other database tools, and I'm gonna show you that now. We're gonna start off in this first segment of Excel level four with creating and formatting a basic pivot table. It all starts here. We're going to build it out of this database, this HR database, and it has information like first name, last name, hire date, department, position, annual salary, performance rating, and management level. What we're going to do is we're going to build a basic pivot table, format a basic pivot table, and then I'll show you some of the basic things you can do uh, with the data. So here we go. We're going to start off up here on the Insert Ribbon tab. And then over here on the left, we're going to click this button called Pivot Tables. Now, right here in this dialog box that it opens up, it indicates that it is choosing from the Pivot Tables sheet, Pivot Tables 18, uh, this data array right here, A1 through H26. You can confirm that it's picking up all the right data if you want by just looking down at that scrolling marquee but I see that it's selected all of my columns and all of my rows. Now I'm simply going to tell it down here where I want the pivot table to be created. I'm gonna go ahead and select a new worksheet. Now down here at the bottom, the previous place we were was on this pivot tables 18 sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and rename that sheet just my PT for pivot table data, just so we don't get confused between the pivot table data in the regular flat database and the actual pivot table itself. Over here on this new sheet that was created, I'm gonna rename that my pivot table. Now once again, to rename a sheet, all you have to do is double click on the sheet tab and type in the new name and there it is. So here's our pivot table data. Our pivot table is gonna be right here. Now the way the pivot table is going to show up over here is when we work over here on the right side of the screen, these are simply our field labels from our database. What we're going to do to activate those different fields is we're going to click and drag and drop them down to these boxes down here. The first question I always ask when I'm building a pivot table is what data do I actually want to slice and dice and add up and average and do different things with? In this particular database, that is going to be the annual salary field. So I will click and drag and drop that annual salary field into this values box. Over here on the left side, the pivot table now really is just one cell. The sum of all of the total salaries from that database, or $1,358,000. Now the next set of questions relate to how do you want to break that information down. So for example, if you say you just want to take a look at it by last name, you could grab the last name field and drop it down here, and now you have it sorted by last name. In a later segment, I'm going to show you how to do all sorts of sorting in Excel, but let's just start real simple. Let's just click on one of these salaries, come up here to the Quick Access Toolbar, and click Z to A, sort largest to smallest. Now we have the highest paid person on the top down to the lowest paid person on the bottom. We can turn that field off by coming over here and clicking this box right here and deactivating that field. Let's say we want to see a total salary summary by department. So we grab the department field and we drop it down here in the row labels. Now over here on the left, we have a total salary breakdown by department. Let's say that inside of each department, we want to see a further salary breakdown by position. So now in addition to having it by department, we'll grab the position field by clicking and dragging and dropping it down below department. So this will now show us by department, by position, as you see over here. Now you have the ability to collapse and expand this detail 
and re-expand it back out just by hitting these plus and minus buttons here to the left, left of the particular department label. So that's kind of cool. Now, we're going to further break this down by performance rating. Now, if I were just to drag this performance rating field down here and drag it as a third row label, you might look at that and say, well, that is kind of confusing. I see I've got by department, by position, by the different performance ratings. That might not be the type of summary you want. What we're going to do is I'm going to grab that performance rating field. I'm going to bring it up here. And I'm going to make it a column dimension. And to me, this is much more informational. In the row labels now, I have by department, by position. But now I have something over here in the column labels. This is something I can't do in a regular flat database. See, all of my performance rating information would have been by uh, organized by row, just like all the rest of the data. So if you come back over here to the pivot table data, you see your performance rating information goes vertical, just like your department and your position information. But over here on a pivot table, you can actually organize the performance rating information by column. It's kind of like twisting this uh, information and making it a data array. So now, for example, I see that I have in Corporate Manager a total of 93,000 of performance rating five people, $140,000 of performance rating four people. Now that's just for Corporate Managers, a total of $321,000. If you go down here to the bottom of the pivot table, you'll see you have uh, $1,358,000 of total salary. Here's the breakdown by performance rating. Here is the breakdown by department. And inside of each department, you have the breakdown by total position. So this is very, very, very informational. And now you can do things like ask questions like who are those performance rating five people? So if I go over here to column labels and click on that filter, drop down here and uncheck all and just select the fives, I see that it's an office manager and a vice president. If now, in addition to that position information, I also wanted to see who they were, well then, or who they are, I can grab this last name field and just for a second, add it down here and I see that it's Fernandez and Riddenhauer. With that information now, I can turn off the last name field, go ahead and unfilter this particular field and bring back the entire pivot table and say there's lots of things, lots of questions I can get answered with uh, looking at this basic pivot table. But uh, we'll do that in future segments here, but we have the basic pivot table built. Now, in addition to building the basic pivot table, I want to show you very, very quickly that you can do three query, very quick things to format the pivot table and make it more usable. Up here, when I have the pivot table selected, up here on the top, I have these extra pivot table tools. Now, these are contextual ribbon tabs that allow me to do further work on a pivot table. If I click the design tab, the first thing I'm going to want to do is pick one of these pivot table styles. Now, you see the live preview happening when you hover over the different pivot table styles. When you find one you like, just go ahead and click on it and select it, and that pivot table style gets selected. I'll pick this one right here. So it puts some header area formatting and some subtotal line formatting to make those stand out better. That, uh, that looks a lot better. Now, the next thing you want to do is change the report layout, also on the design tab. Change the report layout to tabular form. I'll show you why. The, uh, this is compact form. You get this when you first set up a pivot table. It's the default. It just has generic row labels and column labels up here, and you can only filter on one row label and one column label. But when you come up to the pivot table design tab, and you go over to the report layout button, and you select tabular form, you'll see all of that gets corrected. You now actually have the field labels here with the ability to filter on all of them. It's much more uh, lined up and easy to use, and it looks better. And then the third thing you're going to want to do is highlight all the numbers in the table and do some basic formatting with right click. And I will turn these into dollars since they are salary dollars. I will decrease decimal twice, click, click. And I'm actually going to increase the font once. And there you go. So now we have a pivot table that we could turn into a very nice PowerPoint slide, a very nice page in a, a Word document as a report, 
or we could take it and use it as a live analytical tool to take into a conference room with some different managers. So there you go. There is Excel Level 4, Segment 1, Building and Formatting a Basic Pivot Table. Got a lot more to come. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about all different types of things you can do with these pivot tables, but luckily, we've gotten a start. See you on the next segment. <music>